Welcome to Wire Girls. This tutorial is for a matching or complementary earrings and pendant. And I've always named this a genie bottle because to me it's like a little tiny bottle with something magical trying to get out of it. Your earrings you're going to need a pair of pear shaped stones. Mine were, I think, 9x7s and approximately six lengths of four inch square wire and I'll talk about that in a minute and the pendant you'll need a larger pear shaped stone and four lengths of approximately six inch of square wire. Now the wire that I've used is 21 gauge because I had it handy and I had it there. It sometimes can be easier if you use 22 gauge you see my stones are quite little um, so you could but I didn't have any so I used 21 so you can use all the way down to 24 but it's entirely up to you have a play with whatever you've got handy first and then move on to something you're also going to need some um, binding wire I've used 21 gauge but you could use 18 if you wanted it's just the smaller the stones the better you are using a smaller half round wire because it's not going to take as much room up at the bottom where your, uh, your wire is going to come around your stone so I put a little bend into my binding wire obviously I've got the flat side downwards and the dome side outwards so the flat side of the D-shaped wire goes onto my metal on my other three wires there we go and I'm just going to bind this around I'm about central I haven't marked it or anything but you could if you wanted if you were using um, larger stones you might need a little bit more I've just got three wraps there and the first one's a little loose so I'm just going to undo that and pull it tight again and press that down. Now then let's start and trim these off. I'm just going to cut. It doesn't matter which side you cut them off on at this point as long as they're both cut off you cut edges are both at the same side. So let's just trim that and then I'll just press it down to make sure that those little ends are not sticking up. There we go. Now we have a flat piece of wire that we've now bound together. Uh, flat, smooth, nothing crossing over, nothing like that. We need to make that now so that it will fit around the stone. So you can see I've got around those pliers and you can see that the top of the jaw is a very similar size I don't know if I can actually get this so you can see but it's a similar size to the stone now don't worry about it if yours aren't it, you can start narrow and then work to as wide as you've got or you can use a pen or something like that so I could go in there and just to bend around but I've found that it tends to not do very well on the wrapping if you start a little finer further down the pliers so smaller than we would want it and just start your bends. You can then go in hang on a minute, let's just try to lift there, can you see that bit? So we'll just squeeze those together because it was just moving out of the way. Lovely. And then put the larger part of our pliers on and bring the wires in. If yours your pliers are a little much smaller, you could go in with a pen and do this sort of thing and just squeeze it around the pen and I'm just gently easing in. The whole th point about a pair, in, a pair of earrings like this is not to rush it, it's to do it nice and slowly and get the wire the correct shape for the stone. See it's a bit big at the moment, the stone would just drop out if I did it there so we'll just close it up a little more and then I'm putting a slight bend in there can you see with my thumb and I'm going to put a slight bend in on the other side so that I can bring so they're not really totally even but it doesn't make any difference it's so I can bring the wires together like that and get this pear shape so let's see how that works with the stone you see how I released it before I pop the stone in just makes it easier pop that back it's too big 
So if I take my flat pliers now, just get those wires arranged so that they are laying sort of two lines of three. I don't want these bunched together, I want them nice and flat. And I'm just edging nearer and nearer, making that opening that the stone's going to go into a little smaller by just bringing the wires together. So let's see, so I've released pressure on the wires. Just pop the stone in, in you go. And then, if I can get it in straight, I've got it in a little cockeyed at the moment. When I grip, you can see that it's now holding the stone nicely, it's cradling it. There's not too much gap at the top, it's a really nice size is that. So I'll put you down and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my other three wires. When I'm making a pair of earrings, I always do a little bit on one and then I move on to the other one. I don't do the full... How many wraps did I put on there? Three or four. Um, I don't do the full earrings. I, um, I just do a little bit of work on one and then move on to the other. The idea is so that I continue to get them exactly the same. Now I want to show you something here. Can you see the edge of my fingernail there? That little tiny gap that just goes in there. If I rest my finger underneath when you're binding, I can just pop the edge of that wire inside that bit. That means when I pull over, so just seat it properly, when I pull it over, it can't move anywhere, it can't unravel. And it doesn't matter if you don't have much in the way of fingernails, because I don't, my fingernails are pathetic. But it's just enough to stop that wire trying to rotate on you. When you're trying to wrap around, if the other end is not firm and stopped, it's just going to swivel and go around. Just trim that other end off. Lovely. All these bits of silver um, that I'm cutting off all go into um, a scrap pot and they're either returned to the, uh, the company that I buy from or I fiddle through it if I want bigger bits. So starting with the smaller end of my pliers, I'm just easing that round. And once I've got it to start, I then go onto the larger part of the round nose pliers and bring those wires together. There we go. If you need to, you can bring in something like a pen and just bring that in. It'll just make that little bit at the bottom a little fatter. That's it. Now let's have a look. Where's my stone? As they are a pair of stones, they should be exactly the same, but I think mine is slightly different, so I will have to try and a little bend on one side. I'll have to try and keep them different, but it should be okay, so let's see. Right, far too big, massive. It's not going to hold the stone at any time. So let's start bringing this. Make sure I have two rows of three and that I'm not squishing them into a, a messy lump. I've just got two rows and I'm just generally bringing the wire in with my pliers nice and gentle. If you find that while you're doing this and you're bringing the wires in, it still needs a bit more, uh, that your if I put them side by side yeah you can see that the other one's slightly littler if you find that as you're bringing the wires in to tighten it up you're marking the wires with your pliers which is possible if you squeeze too hard you could I'm just bringing that bottom bit in again it was just a little bit too fat you could use round nose pliers they would bring them in the same or if you've got any nylon jawed pliers you could be using those at this point they wouldn't mark the metal or if you've used something like tool magic and you've dipped the tools in there that would protect them personally I don't really like the tool magic stuff because it tends to wear off rather quick like sorry that's my chicken outside having a fit alright let's just pop you down there so I've got the shape I want just see yeah they're just about the same now I 
think that one is slightly bigger. But it could just maybe be me imagining things. No, they're the same, aren't they? Not sure. Oh well, back and back in the box. Like I said, mine are a nine by seven mil uh pear shaped stones and they're gonna go in. So I've got some more of the binding wire. It's still it's twenty one gauge. And I'm gonna start and wrap these six wires together. I don't know if you can see that end but it's clipped in underneath my fingernail on my index finger again. Make sure that's straight and flat by going all the way around. Remember don't worry about the odd loose one at the beginning of your wrapping. You can always, once you've got going and it's got nice and tight and firm, you can always go back on the other end and undo and then pull tight against your work that you've already got so that you don't get any little loose ones. I'm just making sure that these wires stay in two really nice neat blocks. So two rows of three wires laying together. It makes a smaller profile when you're looking at it from the front because really all you're doing is you're looking at the width of two wires. If you were to bunch all these six wires together and then sort of wrap around them you'd probably be looking at a much larger profile. You'd be looking at three or four wires. So let's get that snipped off. I've wrapped all the way down to where the wire is starting to flare out to accept the stone. I'm just pressing that down. There we go. Nice and even. Sorry I've taken it out of shots. Let me just it's so that I can see it better. I'm looking around the camera. I'm just evening up. I'm just, you know, pressing the wires backwards and forwards to make sure I've got them. And evening, e I can't say that. Making more even. <laughs> That's wrong as well. Right, okay, so I'm going to trim that one off at the side. And then I'll press it all down. Now how many have I got? So I think I've got about nine there. So I need to do the same on the other side. So bring those together making sure that the wire is nice and straight. You haven't got a bunch. You've put a bend in your half round wire making sure that the flat edge is on the inside. I've tucked the end of my wire in between my finger and my fingernail on my index finger on my left hand and now I'm just wrapping it around. If you feel more comfortable doing this with pliers instead of fingers do it with your pliers. If you want to press it down every time you press it down every time. It's one of those things. Find the simplest way for you and work with that. Whatever makes you most comfortable will lead to the best results because you've been relaxed and comfortable while you were making it. If you find your hands are tightening up or you find that you're, you're aching between your shoulder blades because you, you, your shoulders have tensed. Sorry, just count these and make sure I've got the right number. Yeah. If you're aching between your shoulder blades, you're holding everything too tense. So you're holding your head too tense. Put everything down and sort of shake it out and relax and sometimes you will this is because I'm talking yeah that's right sometimes you will have to force yourself to actually relax I find it easy to do if I've got music on that I like or I've got uh, a film on that I like so we've got two frames ready for our stones to go in do not worry if they are not exactly the same now I'm going to take one wire and I'm going to use my round nose pliers and I'm going to grip just the back wire. So I'm only holding the back wire and then I'm going to twist and that wire just comes in ever so slightly and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just grip the back wire and twist it in. We are using faceted stones so I need a bit more room so I've gone into the wire and I've brought it up slightly. 
If you are not using a Vasti stone, if you're doing this with a cab, or a cabochon, or a shell or something like that, don't bother to do that lift up. You don't need it. It's only because I need to take in the back of the gemstone. So I'm going to do the same on the other. Just hold the back wire, bring it in. Other side, just the rear wire, so just one wire, and bend it in. And then go in and just lift just lift and you are deepening that wire so that you have like a cradle for your stone to sit in so let's just push push our stone in now this is fiddler um don't really want to push it in with my pliers in case i break it let me just try and it's not flat so i need to push a bit more it will catch if you've made the framework um, a really nice tight fit it is difficult for this to go in but it's one of those things that you need to take a little time persevere and just keep trying different ways of putting it in what we're trying to do is get the stone below the level of the top wire so we bent the back wire and now we would like the stone to sit down into the little cradle that we've made so I'm just trying to bring that in a little more so that it goes underneath the top wire and although it's doing it beautifully on the side near the top of the picture the side near the bottom is not quite see if I can just rub that wire over the top now you see it wasn't quite in properly so push a little more if you have decent fingernails you can almost split this wire up and lift it with your fingernail but mine are shocking at the moment so I'm just using the edge of the pliers now whoops there we go it fell out. Now I've left all of this in. It would have been very very easy for me to just say oh yeah you pop the stone in it drops in you bring the top wire over the top by easing it over and it's super easy and yeah there you go. But it's not. It is fiddly. Have I got it? Now I'm not pressing that hard I'm just pressing it sufficient for it to move over the edges of the stone I don't want to ruin the shape I don't want that pear shape to move at all I just want these two wires to click over the edges of the front of the stone and it's done it yay now to make sure that the back isn't too deep you can just go like that and just press the back up and that will sort of push the stone in even tighter there we are you've hardly covered any of the stone you haven't uh, hidden it we're using relatively thick wire for what is quite a small stone and you don't want to lose that stone the whole point of a pair of gemstone earrings is that you see the gemstone so I'm going to have another go now with the other one has that gone in easier? No, I don't think that's flat. Sorry, I've got the pliers in the way. Just want to make sure that that might be in. Well, that one went in easier. Mind you, I'll say that, you know, and it'll pop out in me in a minute. Hang on. Yeah, it's not in. But we're having me on. Now I'm just going to need to straighten that back one up a bit. Just needed to be a little bit more. Fine tweaking is what I'm doing. There are no big movements. I would rather do 10 or 11 teeny, teeny, tiny movements than just try and think, oh, you know, it needs to go there. I'll just do it in one, one big move. 
all the time you're adjusting and readjusting to accept the stone even though they're a pair they may be slightly different you can't think one's going to work exactly the same as, <laughs> as the other because they'll probably just fall straight through the whole thing and drop out the bottom so as soon as you did that I am moving those wires that were at the back that cradle at the back so that they're a little bit further in and let's try again in you go believe me it's all worth it when you've done it and you look see I've got a pen here with a rubbery end and I'm going to use that to push this stone now have you gone in I can't hurt the stone because of the rubbery end on the pen I think that's in normally I'd have this about half an inch can you just see how there's a little tiny I don't know if you can see it on the film but I've managed to get it in below the level of the wire so I'm just going to tighten that piece there and then I will just bring the two wires over the top as soon as I'm sure that it's in place like I say, if you have fingernails, you can sort of prise the wire at the side up a bit and then it will like click over the top of the stone. However, my fingernails are absolutely rubbish. There we go. Are we in? We're in. Don't let that wire come in too far, so that I just eased it back out a little bit. So tighten up now onto the back to make sure that that back wire is holding the stone firm so it's not going to rattle around. And then we have a pair of, oh, the binding's just slipped up slightly when I was dragging that, it just slide it back down. You didn't see that. And there you go, one pair of gemstones set in symbol. Now we have to make them into earrings. I'm just going to fiddle with that a little bit more. Like I say, fiddler. However, super worth it. Okay. For those of you that are selling, do remember, making a pair of earrings is like making two pendants. So don't forget to add that into your cost when you're charging the amount of work that you do. So I've taken out the back wires so I know where they are and I really the wires I want to work on is the, the middle of the two so it's the second wire and I want that one out and I'm going to create two tiny little loops. Now if you don't like loops you could just bend these flat down to that binding so that they didn't show, you could have swirls you could have fancy loops, you could have anything you want but I'm just going to do a little curl so right on the end of my round nose pliers grip the end of that wire that I've trimmed and close it in Ta -da! two little loops now I don't know exactly how long those are when I cut them I've done them for that often, I, I must admit I tend to do it by just by eye but if you're always worried about cutting, always cut too long and then you can always trim off. So I've tried to cut this a little bit longer than I normally would just to show you that if I did that as a curl let's have a look, see how much bigger that curl is now than that one because I used a bit more wire then I can go in my pliers and I can just trim a little tiny bit off the end and it's that tiny that didn't even want to drop off. Then I can curl the curl in a bit more and it's still bigger so let's trim a little bit more off. So this is what I mean about doing a lot of little tiny movements rather than one big sweeping movement. It's easier to get things perfect if you just go at it a little tiny bit at a time. So I've got two loops either side. Now my front, sorry, just straighten that up. There, they're near enough. 
my front wires are going to be design so a curve or a swirl or a heart shape whatever you want I'm just going to have a swirl very simply the two wires just come down round to where the stone stops and all the way around because I've gone round there I am going to just trim just make sure that's flat down trim the wires off so that they will sit in at the back of that whoops come here running away now the back of that curl so just cut off there and then press that down it's pressing down onto the binding that we've already done so it's nice and firm it's not going to go anywhere and there you've got your curves so this is my other earring so I always have to look at them that one's going that way so this one has to go that way so that they're a matching pair so both wires together down round wrap all the way around slip off not the camera over let's just trim those back and then flatten that onto the binding wires now I can still see one of them can you just see the end of it there it needs to be a little bit higher just so that it tucks underneath the sweep that's coming down then these two become the loop if you like that's going to hold the still not happy about that let me just trim it a little shorter if I make it a bit shorter it should just tuck way throw it on the floor again and there we go knock the camera over it's one of those days isn't it let's just flatten that down that's better now if you wanted you could make something fancier out of this if you wanted your earrings to be a longer drop you could you could do like a figure of eight shape or anything I'm just going to take one of the sides the side that's going at the back of the sweep and I'm going to cut it quite short and then I'm just going to press it down onto the uh, bindings and the other side I will make into a full circle go all the way around my pliers all the way around and pass and trim them off where it touches it's just like making um, a loop on a head pin you know a loop and straighten that up and close it down because they're only very little lightweight earrings I'm just pressing that a little bit further onto the binder that's the first one that I cut so that I can straighten those up there we go so you've got a little triple curl on the top the top one's going to be the thing that holds your earrings so we need to do the same on the other side so bend the one that's going underneath the little design swirl out of the way and they're so little and fiddly and just press that down against the binding use your round nose pliers go on curl that all the way around sorry it went out of shot and then trim it off so it just goes around and touches there we go I think that might be slightly bigger than the other side let's have a look from the front yeah it's also a bit wonky if you've got a circle it's not really a circle kind of it's a circle you can go in with your pliers and you can sort of burnish round I'm just going to take some of this length off because it's longer than the other side move that up that's it 
that's better. So I have two little tiny earrings. I'm just going to play with that a bit more. Really cute. Very nice. Blue topaz and silver earrings. They need some ear wise making for them. Now, if you check out the skill sets, there is a skill set tutorial for making ear wires where I think I did something fancy on them, some little wraps around. But this is an absolutely basic one. I've got two lengths of wire. They're probably this round wire. It's 0.8 mil and they're probably two inches long. You might not need two inches, maybe only need an inch and a half. I put a curl in the end and then I go back in so that, that curl becomes central and the same with the other one or you could buy head pins or you could buy like a stud if you prefer stud to um, uh, like french hooks or ear wires get that straight I've got some little tiny silver beads in here I have got a nasty feeling that they're not big enough to go on but I'll just have a look if they'll go on I'll pop a little silver bead just above that circle but you know they won't, the holes aren't big enough so I'll just leave them as they are Oops, bits of stuff everywhere round nose pliers, grip that's going to go in there that's going to go up, I don't want to do it too long that's probably where the ear is going to go through but you know I like a bit of shape in them so I grip right down against the hook that I've put in bend it towards the front and then bend it round and to the back and then you get this lovely sort of sweeping makes it a bit more interesting than just leaving it dead straight and bending it through your ear you need to cut them off so that it's slightly longer at the back it's for the and then that needs filing off with a file it's so you get the balance right if it's slightly longer than where you're attaching whatever you're attaching you get the balance so I'm just going to go next to the other earring make sure my size I've gone under the loop again bent it so it creates a curve put the other earring against it and then you can get the curves so they match so I'm going in now where I put the top of the earring and I bend that round and then I'll get two French hooks that match one another Ta -da! so let's see where I need to cut off there and trim it and then like I say it will need to be filed when you are opening a loop to fasten something to the earrings don't uh, go in and force it that way go in and twist it sideways like that and then that will go straight into that top loop and then you can just bend that back to straight make sure it's closed and there's your earring. I'm going to do the same with the other one and we'll have a pair of earrings. Now then, the pendant. So I have a my little dinky earrings which still need filing because I haven't done it and a slightly larger pear shaped stone. The, um, as you can see these are quite dinky. This one is a 12 by 8 pair but they're a good match for colour which is kind of nice so I'm going to need four pieces of wire this time they're about six inches long and again I have used 21 gauge but you could use 22 you could use 24 entirely up to you and entirely up to the size of the stone uh, if you've got some really 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 little pear shaped stones you're going to need 24 gauge to do this you're not going to be able to do it with 21 because it will still it will hide the stone so I've got my four wires and we're going to work it pretty much in the same way that we did the earrings so I've got the four wires together 
wriggle them around until they're all nice and flat go across them with pliers if you go across with pliers nothing can sort of stand up underneath there it's got to be flat because the gap between the pliers is flat I have put a bend in my half round wire and I'm wrapping it around three or four times now we can use a little bit more we've got slightly bigger stone so we can use more wraps the wraps around the end are really sort of dependent on how big your stone is I've stated at the beginning to use a pear shaped stone because really that is much easier you could do this with an oval um, squares are pretty difficult to do you'd have to if you didn't square shape stone I would suggest that you go in and you do it as a diamond if you know what I mean start at the point and work up but to start off with have a go with pears they are they're a nice shape to work with so I have put my binding around and now whoops you take your very slippy stone and pop it on and we're going to create the curve just like we did on this one we're going to create the curve on this so I've got my round nose pliers and I'm going to start up near the top no point in starting near the bottom this time it's a bigger stone and I'm just bending each side keeping those wires straight as they're coming up now let's see how we're doing yeah far too big so I'll put the pliers back on and start stroking the wires in and I'm putting that little bend in one side yeah you can see it and a little bend in the other just so that I can bring those wires together now that is still far too big for the stone but we keep checking so drop it out hold it together make sure that it's flat and it's straight and it's even and start bringing them together I use my round nose pliers there to help with the marking the wire put my stone back in and check how it's doing although it's holding it down near the bottom to me that's too big a gap up here at the top so I want to come in a little closer out you get so pliers oops you don't want it like that let those wires straight so that you've got two rows of four and I'm gradually bringing them closer and close together let's pop the stone back in and close it up that's a lot better yeah it's nice and tight in there it's nice and snug whoops and that's what happens when you leave the stone in and you try and close it down now I'm just evening the sides up a little bit because I've used four wires instead of three it's easy to press in one side of the wires and not the other now I'm a little uneven down here at the bottom but don't worry about it let's get some bindings on to hold everything nice and safe So, make sure you've got two perfect rows of four and start and wrap your binding around again 21 gauge it's the thinner of the binding wires that I tend to use it's a simple pendant you're going for the smallest amount of bulk uh, possible so I don't put loads on go around several times I want a um, you see how that's got quite a long drop before the stone I want this to be similar you can really emphasize this if you want the pendant to, to be more you could say use I don't know seven or eight inches of wire and then have this really lovely long stem going down to the stone that looks really nice 
let's just trim that off nice and close and press that down there we go pull it tight again usually because the top wrap or the first wrap is a little loose and I'm just going to trim that off and we'll press that down there we are that's just a little uneven there so I'm just going to go in with my brown pliers grip hold the end and twist it in bend it up so that it will accept the depth of the stone like I say you don't need to do this if you're using a cabochon with a flat back and then just grip the end one there bend it back pliers in ease it forward and then the stone goes in or at least we hope the stone goes in this is just as fiddly even with a bigger stone let me see if I can just open that above it you've got your wires at the back which probably the stone's not sitting quite that far down it's not resting into that cradle that I made so I'm just trying to push it in a bit further where's that pen and push you in a bit more and it's slipped if your stone pops straight in without all this trouble and faff I would be worried that you hadn't got the frame tight enough so if you get to that point you pop the stone and it's not very um, tight at all it goes in really easy I would suggest closing the top down a little bit more to make it that bit tighter now have I got that over the top yes now what about the other side so pliers on either side of that top wire and I'm just easing it in it's not coming in so much that it's it's like the back where it's a proper you know bent in bit it's just catching over the edge so I'm going to tighten down just like I did on the earrings and tighten down Eee, it's in it's not going anywhere this is a pendant not an earring so obviously we need um, a bale rather than the little loop to hang some French hooks on so if I take the back two wires and I bend them backwards slightly so that I can work with them and then I take the next two wires so if we were counting them from the back it would be row number one and row number two now as I take those out I can bring those either side of the central wire can you see how I can make a flat area so the two that were at the very back are in the middle and the two that were in the row next to the back are either side I need some more half round wire because I'm going to bind these four strands normally I would pick up my wire I'm going to bind I'd get my pliers and I'd put a bend about that far in the end and then I would start and bind somewhere it was easy to get in however can you see how that there moves shape it gets smaller so if I bend my wire about halfway along yeah that'll do it and put a bend in I can start part way up these wires let's get them flat because the whole idea is to get everything flat and neat and sort of sleek looking so round I go but I've given myself sufficient wire that I can not only work from the left to the right which is what I usually do but I can also work from the right to the left with the other half of the wire just press that down make sure it's straight now tighten that one up and go around this is very difficult to actually show you what I'm doing because 
the wires that are the front are sort of in the way I am aware of that I'm trying to get to it so that you can see and I'm pressing down so let's just move out I can slide all of this down the wires so don't worry about it being a long way out so cause what we can do is just slide down like that to about there and then I can work from there outwards and I'm working on getting it neat and tight don't worry about the wires that we started with if they're not quite as neat and tight as we want we can always go back to them later so that's it you can see how it's neatening up because I've actually got some some back, pre back pressure sorry to work with Oops. so you see that lumpy bit there I've got I don't like that but it's about three wraps down so I'm going to undo it it's only a little thing but I will always go back to get it even if it's you know a little tiny half a millimeter bump that I can see and most people would look at it and not even notice it I will go back and I'll fix it possibly because I'm slightly OCD about my wire work nothing else um, but I do like things to look really lovely and when you've made something this this fiddly that if just sort of like a couple of minutes of going back and rectifying something can make it look well, not perfect because nothing's ever perfect is it um, but you know it can make it look that bit better by not having a little lump I'll do it so I'm wrapping now down towards that core area where the wires are split and it's a bit fiddly but it's okay and you go, can you see how I'm pushing my finger in to push the wire down so that it's not wrapping over the top of itself and just flatten those down now the other end I'm going to wrap a bit more again this how far you wrap is one of these things that you will you'll find your own happy length if you like as long as I can pass a chain through it it's fine for me because I tend to you know I'm, I'm selling these so they just go as long as they go on a standard chain they go out in a box and they get sold if you're making this for a, a specific thing maybe you're making it to go on a talk or maybe you're making it to go on a ribbon or a leather thong you can adjust the size of the bales to fit exactly what you're going to put it on if you wanted this to go over a talk for instance you, or a, a, a collar you would need to bind further so that you had a longer length I'm going to snip that off I can't get much further in now I can't get my fingers in anymore so cut that off and I press that down and that's pressed down on that inside edge lovely let's do a bit more binding so if you're doing it over a talk or a collar you'll need more if you're doing it something very thin like a ribbon you could probably get away with a little bit less um, I haven't got a proper tip I think I've got it's not quite an inch but I think I might just do a little bit more but it's nice and smooth and flat which is what looks good so let's just wrap that round a little further I do like my bales bound like this to me it gives them more strength so let's just trim that off now this time I've tr trimmed off at the back of the piece and then I'm going to trim the wires that are sticking out I've got a couple of centimeters there I didn't think it was quite an inch it's just a less probably about three quarters but 
Right, I just press that with my pliers. Can you see that little mark that I've made there? You can feel it with your fingernails. If you go across and press, you can then cut one wire at a time, following that line that I just pressed in, and you get a perfectly sm smooth line, but you've only cut one wire at a time, which is better for your pliers. Round nose pliers grips on the bare wires, not the bound wires. If you grip onto the bound wires, you will move the binding. And I'm just curling that around. Whoops, sorry. It's trying to bend the whole thing down. I'm not going to have that. So pull that back up. Do as you're told. All right, now I'm going to have to bend over the binding. So I'm going to grip very gently and just roll it round a little further. Now I have made a little bit of hole in the binding, but I can just push that up with my fingernails. There we are. Now, I have two wires. The front two wires are going to make a um, little curve sweep going round like that, so that it matches the earrings down. Lovely and round and back up. Now instead of cutting off like I did with the earrings there's more to this one so I'm actually going to take it up and over there and then I'll trim it off so it's actually wrapping over and it's attaching to itself rather than just finishing off at the side of the piece. A bit bigger. So just take one wire through at a time to the back and that will flatten down and touch against itself. One wire at a time is often easier because you're not working with the two wires twisting. Just bring those back together. There we go. Now your other two wires we could pull one one way and one the other and create little tiny loops like we did on the earrings. So I want to go that way and we put a little loop there and want to go that way and we put a little loop there but you know what? I'm going to show you something different. You can, you don't necessarily have to come down, you can go up. So if I create a curve there then it's a case of where do I put the ends. I could go into the sweeping loop but I don't think I'd like that. So I haven't done little blobs. What I've done is I've done this curve but you could do the little blobs and then they would match in with your earrings. I'm going to take that across the back. What does that look like? Yeah, it goes in there quite neatly. And round to the front. However, I've got nowhere to put it. I can't get it in between because it'll look really blocky in that gap. There isn't really room for it there. I can't just cut it off because it would be sticky uppy pokey and it would catch on jumpers. There, there certainly isn't room for me to get it really down there. What I could do is if I pull this forward, if I bend it down like that, I can wrap those ends into that loop much like I did on that first swirl. So I cut some of the length off, pass them through that loop that I brought forward so that I can access it. One wire just through, come here. I said it was dropsy there, didn't I? Right, let's put that through there and just bend it down, close it over. And then same with the other wire. Try not to pull on these wires. When you've created a loop or a twist or a curve, you don't want to pull too hard on the end because if you pull too hard on the end, you're going to pull the wire straighter and you're going to lose that curve. So I'm going to bend that back up where it ought to be, up against the bale. And there's my pendant. 
So you've got a pair of little blue topaz earrings and a complementary pendant. It's always nice for selling. You can upsell from your pendant. A pair of earrings to go with it. I hope you enjoyed that one. Can't see, wait to see what you make on the forum. Happy wrapping.